Hey everyone, Bob Wormsley here from Insidium and this is Top Tip Tuesday. So today I'm going to be showing you a feature in X Particles, but this feature, although it's X Particles, it can also be used with Nexus setups as well. It's XP Flow Field and I'm going to show you how you can make a custom velocity field to get your particles to follow the path of any splines. This is great for logos and for text, but even for abstract stuff as well, because we can get really nice organic looking fluid particle sims but we can control exactly where they're going to go so let's start that clock and we'll jump into cinema 4d here's our scene then we have an emitter we've lined it up with this spline that we want to use as our sim so let's go to insidium x particles dynamics and we'll bring in an xp flow field uh, we have to simulate within the bounds of our flow field so let's just adjust it so our bounds are completely taking up our spline okay now you can see we've got these squiggly lines in our flow field and we're getting this squiggly animation with our particles and that's because if we go to the settings by default a random layer is brought in which creates these random velocity vectors these lines are showing the power and the direction of our force field and that's giving us that animation but that's not what we want so let's just delete that layer for now and our vectors disappear now we're going to add a along spline layer because that's what we want to do and in the along spline layer if we come down to the layer options we can put the spline we want to use here so let's drag in the helix and now you can see our vectors are curving around like our spline that's pretty good and if we hit play we're getting some movement but it's not perfect yet so why are these escaping well they're escaping for two reasons by default the strength of the flow field is only set to 10 percent so let's whack that up to full but also this along spline layer when you bring new layers in they have fall off active by default and this fall off is saying that there is full strength at the spline and as the particles uh, go up to 50 centimeters away it tails off to nothing so that's why some particles are managing to escape the influence of the flow field because of the fall off so, so let's just switch that fall off off and you'll see that our particles perfectly move around here excellent so let's add some more effects to this um, in fact what we're going to do because we want to have a bit of more detail what we can do is reduce the cell size which is like the voxel size if we reduce this we'll have uh, more velocity vectors because it's a smaller grid and that means we'll have more detail but it'll take longer to calculate but with this amount of particles look we're getting really good playback so that's fine okay let's add another layer we want to add some detail now so we're going to add a curl and this curl you'll see it's completely taken over our simulation now and we can see the curl working with our vectors now the reason it's taken it over is because this layering system uses blend modes and the curl when you bring in a new object it's by default on normal blend mode which means that the along spline isn't being used at all so if we change this to say add then it's going to add those two effects together now you can see that's kind of working but it's still not quite right so instead of adding what we're going to do is we'll leave it on normal but we'll just reduce the strength of the layer and that means the layer underneath is also going to be included in the calculation and yeah look we're starting to get a little bit of noisy detail that's looking pretty cool so let's make a couple of changes first of all by default our flow field is set to direction mode that means that these vectors aren't affecting the speed of any particles they're just affecting the direction they're getting the speed just from whatever we set in the emitter but if we set this to velocity then it controls the speed of the particles as well so we're going to have it on velocity for now and let's just go to our curl and increase that strength a bit to make it a bit more noisy yep look that's looking pretty interesting now so now what we want to do is we're losing a little bit of the shape of our spline here so what we could do is use another layer to encourage the particles to move towards our spline so let's go to the add layer and this time we'll add a two spline 
Again, we need to put in the helix. And by default, it's set to normal. Uh, that's fine, but we'll have to put the strength way down. Look, you can see the vector's really pushing the particles now towards the spline. Let's reduce that strength down. We just want this to kind of influence them just a little to push them towards that um, spline. And we'll also take off the fall off. Now let's hit play. So this is, yes, look, it's encouraging them towards the spline, but actually it's pushing them a little bit too much, isn't it? So let's go and reduce that strength way down to say 3% for our two spline. Let's have a look. Yeah, that's looking excellent now. Really pleased with that. So if we make our flow field invisible, now you can see that with just one dynamic object, we have been able to create what looks like a really nice organic detailed particle sim, perfectly following along with our spline. Um, we've done it quickly and easily. And of course, this is adjustable. If we go to our helix, for example, and increase the start radius, then it will respect any of the changes that we make to our spline. If we add more curls, uh, this remains procedural throughout. That's the awesome power of the XP flow field.